I've got books in that office where uh, essentially uh, 356 people showed up at the polls at the right poll. A ballot, uh, a poll worker gives them a ballot, and then they end up uh, not having their vote counted because of one of J. Kenneth Blackwell's poll workers messed up. And Blackwell will say, well, they should have voted on a machine. Instead, they voted on paper. We can't count their vote. What sort of democracy is that? What Blackwell did, uh, really, as we like to say, uh, is really old-fashioned thuggery and the new high-tech Tammany. Right? It's the new Jim Crow. It's racist. Uh, it's class-based. And he's being rewarded for it. And everything he did that was illegal, the Republicans in the State House now try to write in the law and say it's perfectly acceptable. I know a lot of the readers of our web magazine are going to see uh -huh. this footage. And you probably get this all the time. The first thing they're going to think is, okay, if it's this bad, and if Blackwell's this bad, why are you running as a third-party progressive candidate and, quote, stealing progressive votes? I'm not after Democratic votes. I'm after Republican votes uh, and people that aren't going to vote, right? Uh, because I believe the vast majority of people across the political spectrum uh, once they realize what uh, uh, what Jay Kenneth Blackwell is about, they can. Uh, uh, I, I don't think the vast majority of Republicans want to vote for a right wing uh, theo fascist uh, that doesn't believe in separation of church and state. So I'm looking for Republican votes. I'm looking for people that uh, aren't voting. Like there's plenty of people. Half the population doesn't vote uh, in the election, uh, and they don't vote uh, because they often disagree. I mean. Uh, I mean, what is the key difference? They've now moved a million dollars uh, of uh, corporate Republican lobbying money away from Blackwell into the Strickland campaign. Why do you suppose that is? Uh, because they expect something from Mr. St uh, uh, Strickland, and they're already getting it, right? The boondoggle known as uh, coal gasification. Right? I mean, that's his solution to uh, uh, the energy crisis in the state. Instead of going with cheaper alternative uh, solar power, uh, every building has to be a green building, doing retrofitting, doing wind party. I mean, Harvey Wasserman in there is one of the leading authorities. I mean, they're going to they're gonna coal mine, uh, destroy, rubbleize the hills, destroy the river sheds all over Ohio, and pump CO2, untested technology, directly into the ground with massive, massive uh, subsidies. Is that really the solution uh, to the uh, energy crisis? I mean, Ohio needs to accept the uh, uh, Kyoto Accords just as the nine states did in the Northeast already. Uh, we need to build mass transit. We need to do the obvious. Uh, and the obvious isn't uh, essentially uh, being moderate Republicans, which is what the Democratic Party has become. So uh, people are afraid of J. Kenneth Blackwell, but uh, people also want change. The best way to get change is, one, to create uh, a progressive movement that's independent uh, of the corporations. Right? When Roosevelt did, uh, did uh, well, uh, Norman Thomas was on his left. When Woodrow Wilson won as a liberal in 1912, uh, Eugene Debs got 6% of the vote. Uh, the natural tendency is the country swung dramatically to the right, uh, increasingly to the right. The strategy is not to, to set up just right of, uh, you know, just to the center right and say, look, we're not that theocratic, we're not that corporatist, we're only slightly so, and expect that to be debate. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, the Gore movie, you know, the... Uh, an Inconvenient uh, Truth. Yeah, An Inconvenient Truth that has just come out, the documentary. Uh, in part, uh, I mean, what he points out in Inconvenient Truth is that the United States uh, mileage on cars uh, doesn't meet the Chinese standard. Uh, nor does the state of California, uh, which is supposed to be, you know, the great dramatic uh, liberal standard. So if, if every democracy in the world has universal health care, and you're not coming out for universal health care as a Democrat, the question becomes exactly what the Democratic Party uh, is about. I mean, here in Ohio, I think they pretty much purge their progressive wing, which I used to be part of. And thus, at this point, if you really want to send these people a message. I really hope Strickland comes and takes all my votes. Uh, but he won't be able to do that by moving to the center. He'll actually have to do it by moving in a traditionally progressive way, uh, a la FDR or even the domestic policies of uh, Kennedy and Johnson. 
Uh, I, you know, I'm not about a political debate that scans the political spectrum from A to B, you know, and, wh and where uh, you pretend like uh, universal health care is impossible. Uh, uh, or you say, yes, I would send the National Guard uh, down to the Mexican border. I mean, that's insane. If anything, you'd send them to the Canadian border. That's where they just found the terrorists uh, who are planning to blow things up. So you got to know, I think it's, you know, tends to be uh, xenophobic on the one hand to, to say, uh, we can't have a border patrol, but we're going to send a National Guard, which are fighting a war in Iraq. I mean, essentially, you're militarizing your borders. So we've got to move past the kind of politically convenient uh, solutions. Uh, so I really hope uh, Ted Strickland comes out strong as a progressive, comes out strong as an environmentalist, comes out for universal health care, comes out for alternative energy, comes out for democratizing the corporate boards in Ohio, and as a result steals all my votes. Now, do I think that's going to happen? No. Thank you for watching CBTV, Cincinnati Beacon Television.